if there's like just just smoke showing, I'm trying to find the fire. Like that's yeah. what I'm trying to look for. But once I find the fire, I can start searching back. You know what I mean? <clears throat> or or go or search past it or go above it. So uh, response is engine five, engine three, engine one, ladder three, ladder two, rescue one. We got smoke showing. Division one, you're on location, block 23, reporting smoke show on 727. Job Talks podcast members do not represent the cities and towns they work for in their views and opinions. They are views and opinions that belong to us only. We are not here trying to be the experts or tell people how to do their job. Our goal with this show is simply to facilitate knowledge sharing. Welcome back to season three. We're here with episode three. Uh, got a guest in the house from uh, Hartford, Connecticut. Eric Winfrey is here. Before we get started, just want to say thanks for joining us again. Or if this is your first time here, thanks for tuning in. If you like what we're doing, uh, make sure to follow us on all our social medias and subscribe to the channel here. We're at Job Talks, J-O-B-T-L-K-S on all of our social media channels. Eric, man, welcome, dude. Thank you for having me, man. Appreciate it. So real quick. Thanks for coming, man. <laughs> Absolutely. Real quick, I want to I want to talk about how this happened. So Eric called us out on our social media, right? <laughs> He was like, he was like, why don't you guys get some uh, New Englanders on the show that aren't Metro Boston? So I uh, naturally clicked on his profile and was like, who the fuck is this guy? And uh, saw saw Hartford <laughs> Hartford ladder three on his helmet. And I was like, oh, you mean like Hartford? Let's do it. And uh, obviously, you were a good sport about it. And here we are, man. I'm I'm pretty excited about doing this episode. No, for sure, man. Thank you for having me, man. Uh, like I was telling you guys earlier, it's cool, super cool. You guys have a platform like this for like young climbing to kind of talk talk shop, you know, and I'm, I'm all about it. So people who know me know this is my, uh, my, my space. So yeah, you said you're kind of a buff, right? Cool, man. I'm a huge buff, bro. Huge buff. Huge buff. Nothing, nothing wrong <laughs> with that. Um, <laughs> one, one other thing real quick. You're in a safe space. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the internet, the yeah. safest space yeah. of all. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, real quick, before we get started, um, as most people know, we record these episodes before they actually air. Um, we happen to be recording, um, Tonight, um, the there was a line of duty death out of Buffalo at a four alarm fire. Um, so we're just going to take a quick moment of silence for uh, for that Jake, his family, and his fire family. Um, keep them in our thoughts. I will say, Eric, that uh, Barry was pretty leery about having uh, having someone who spelled Eric with a Q on the show. You know, you know? I've, been, I've been calling you Eric with a Q. Eric with a Q all the time. Uh, yeah, you know what? I've, I've, ha- I've heard that since I've been in kindergarten. Right? So. I believe it. Uh, Although, to give you credence, uh, I spell Barry B A R R E Y. So I don't know if I'm in the position to be saying shit about anything. For sure. Actually, a little tidbit like, um, I, don't know if you've, I don't know if you guys ever watched ER. Um, Eric LaSalle, which is uh, one of the doctors on there. I was named after him. You know what I mean? So, oh, no kidding? Oh, okay. oh not sure. Oh, all right. So, for sure. Ba- Barry, I thought you spelled your name with an IE. <laughs> no, it's a dark, uh, that's a dark subject. <laughs> Thank you for having right, me. Never mind. <laughs> um, so, here's a, it's going to turn into a therapy I know, session. Right? <laughs> Um, so here's a quick, uh, you're obviously on uh, truck three or ladder three. What do you guys call it down in Hartford? Um, officially ladder three, but you know, sometimes people kind of sprinkle in truck three, but okay. Yeah. And this is obviously after, after a job here. So I was scrolling through, um, yeah. some of the photos you sent me and, uh, there were some photos where that helmet shield was looking brand new. And, uh, here in this photo, it's looking like you, you've been in the, the shit a little bit. Uh, it's, it's funny how that, how that happens quick, right? Yeah. So. You want to give us a little a little quick background about yourself, how long you've been on the department. Um, I know you said you, you did uh, call slash volunteer before you were on Hartford. Just get a little background about yourself and uh, how you ended up where you're at. Um, so if you, don't, if you don't know already, my name is Eric Winfrey. I'm 29 years old. Um, in July, I'll have six years on the job, Hartford Fire Department. Um, signed to Ladder 3. You know, it's been, you know, that to me is, is the best company on the job, you know. Um, before that... Um, was a volunteer in a suburb of Hartford and a 
was doing that for a couple of years. And, uh, and yeah, so, you know, I, you know, I definitely have had the suburban experience and the very urban experience. So, um, you know, still a student of the job, you know, very much still learning. Yep. And, uh, my, my disclaimer to anyone who's going to watch this is like, I'm not saying I'm the expert. I'm still very much so learning and still taking classes, still, still trying to get better. So, um, you know, which, which I think, yeah. uh, I think we all are and, and should be doing throughout our whole career, you know? Sure. Did you get assigned to the truck uh, right off the jump, right out of the academy? No. So quick tenure of, uh, of uh, my career. When I first out of public school, I was, I was assigned to Engine 1. I was probably there for like, I don't know, eight, we, eight weeks, 10 weeks, 12 weeks, or something like that. And then from there, I went to Engine 2. Um, and, I, and I was there for about eight to 10 weeks. And then from there, I went to Ladder 3. So um I think I think my class was on the line in 2017, and by in June of 2018, I was I was assigned to ladder three. So, um, yeah. and uh, from 2018 to now, that that's kind of where I've been. That's awesome. So, so I, I mean, that's a real quick stint on the uh, on the engines there. Um, For sure. So, just uh, want to go through a little bit of uh, people who might be unfamiliar with Hartford, Connecticut. Just a little bit of demographics about the city. So. Um, you guys, uh, obviously, Hartford is the capital of Connecticut. We all know that from the elementary song we sing, right? Um, yeah. About 20 square miles. Is that right? Yeah, 1720 for sure. Yeah. And then you have a population just over 120,000. Uh, 120, yeah. Is that is that like pretty steady or do you guys have like a huge daytime population? Obviously, that's your like nighttime population. Well, I would say this. I, I think COVID definitely influenced those numbers a lot. You know. Okay. So I'm curious. I'm curious to see what the actual numbers are now. But I would say before COVID, that's that was definitely definitely the truth. Like daytime, and you know, you have a like a, def, a lot of influx of people kind of in the city, right? And then at time, you know, definitely doing us a little bit. Yeah. So um, I know. I know in Cambridge, where Barry and I are on, we're actually about the same size population wise, about 120 thousand. Mm -hmm. Um, I was telling you the other day, we just stuff it all into six square miles. Um, yeah. and we have, a we have a lot of business in tech. So our daytime population is, is, uh, is fairly high. Um, it, sure. and then you guys are flanked on the East by the Connecticut river. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Ooh, is it the East? I don't know. I don't know. Cause I have to look at a map, but uh, but, <laughs> but I, would, I would probably assume assume so. It was the, it was the right like, side of the map I looked at. I assumed that was the east. Yeah. So if if like if you have the Connecticut River kind of flowing down, where to the left of that, right? You know, okay. okay. East of the river is East Hartford. Yep. Right, because I mean, they're their own fire department, or whatever. And then to the west of us is West Hartford. You know? Okay. So, awesome. Okay. Um, and then yeah. so a little bit about uh, your department. You guys were established in 1864. So you guys, you yeah. guys have a pretty, pretty good history and, and tradition there. Mm -hmm. um, what do you guys run for personnel and uh, apparatus? So we have eleven trucks, uh, five engines, and uh, one heavy rescue, and uh, and we ride four. Okay. Uh, to each apparatus, you know. So they're definitely very good staffing. So you, yeah, so you guys, you guys have four man minimums, which is awesome. Four man minimums for sure. So what what's the minimum? For the whole for the shift, seventy three, seventy three. Okay, wow, yeah, oh, wow. that's it, huge. It was seventy two, but then recently we we uh, just got a torque commander position. So okay, um, so do you um, that, do you guys that's your guys minimum seventy three? Yeah, one hundred percent. So right now we have seventy three people working right now. And that's so, awesome. do you guys also have like district of battalion chiefs or anything like that? Yes. Yeah, so. Um, we're at North End Companies and actually we're in house with, with the, with the district, but, um, but yeah, district two is assigned to the North End, you know, and district one's assigned to the South End and the tour commander obviously is overseeing the whole shift, you know? Okay. So, so that's, that's again, pretty similar to at least Barry and I, where we run, we run, um, we call it division, but we have, uh, basically uptown and downtown and, uh, we don't have yeah. a tour commander that oversees the whole shift, but. Um, mm -hmm. we run, we run fairly, fairly similar. Um, we don't do have four man minimum. So, which is, which is awesome. Really? Wow. Um, wow, that's yeah. and obviously we're here to talk about, we do for our rescue company, but that's it. Mm, right. Gotcha. Right. Um, and we're obviously here to talk about truck work, right? That's your, that's your thing. Um, I love, I love, truck work, man. I love you want to tell us, so Hartford, which I learned just from talking to you before we did this, um, Hartford up until recently always had tower ladders 
and you guys just mm. got your first straight six. So you want to talk about what you guys run for your trucks? Yeah. So right now, as of right now, we have four mid mount um, tower ladders, something, and then uh, and one rear mount E one street stick. Um, you know, I think the general consensus on the job right now is you know it's fifty fifty, but. Let me, let me tell you something, man. And and a lot of four is like our rival, bro. You know what I mean? So I, I hate to I hate to give them the <laughs> flowers. You know what? Just to be objective, like every fire I've seen, I've seen them at, like they've gotten a spot and they've gotten a spot fast, you know, and guys are making the roof fast. So right. when it comes to like, just like, you know, down and dirty brass tacks, you know, like they've been able to to, to get the roof and get it fast, you know, so. Um, no, that's a, that's actually a good intro to a little video that I, that I got up here. So, uh, I just pulled some, some video straight off the interwebs, just Google mm-hmm. Hartford and happened to happen to catch, uh, a video of your ladder three and your ladder four operating at a fire. Let's see if we can pick it up here. Yep. So there you go. So that's you guys on the left hand side there. I was not at this fire, but that's uh, but that is definitely uh, uh, beats or doing their doing their thing up there. I think I think they the roof uh, the driver was actually on the on the turntable right there, but okay. Um, but and last he was inside, but still great spot by uh, by both ladder drivers, you know. So yeah, You're getting both of them. Is up there, there. A, str- a strategic reason uh, why you guys go with uh, like historically have gone with tower ladders? Is there like, is that, was it just like a cultural thing or? Um, you know like what? That happen? is a great question. And I wish I had the answer to it, you know, but I, for all, as long as I've known, we've always had tower ladders, you know? Um, gotcha. I, I know back in the day they used to have a tiller, you know, I think, and there's been some rumblings of whether we're going to get one or not. So, but, um, but as, as to why we've always rode tower ladders, that that's a great question. And no one's, really been able to kind of pin that answer down for me. You know what I mean? So it wasn't until Interesting. the past two years where with the with the implementation of Ladder 4 being a rear mount straight stick and and us potentially getting another one, you know. Um, so. Yeah, probably, yeah. probably uh, some decision of, of a, cool things about your culture. Yeah, probably some decision from a chief, you know, 100 years ago or, or not 100 years ago because they didn't have towers, but back back in the day that, that, uh, that just kind of stuck, you know what I mean? Um, but that's, that's good to roll into, um, talking a little bit about the culture of Hartford. So you were, um, pretty big on, on, on Connecticut firefighting culture and how it's kind of a blend. And you want to talk to us a little bit about the culture down there? No, for sure. Um, I think you could say this about Connecticut in general, but like we're, we're like sandwiched in between New York and Mass, right? So we really are like the blend of like both, both these cultures, right? I mean, if you... Firefighting aside, right, and everyone you ask here is like, you know, are they a Yankees fan or a Red Sox fan or they're a yeah, yeah. Fan or a Bruins fan or, you know, I don't know. It's just you could you could really tell that like just through the pulse of the state, right? And then when it comes to like firefighting specifically, you can really tell like states. I'm sorry, not states, but um, towns on the southern end of Connecticut. They're very FDNY based, like New Haven. You could just you can just tell, right? Or Bridge, very like. FDNY heavy, you know, and I think Hartford is definitely that perfect blend of like um, New York and Boston, you know what I mean? Right. And we will we'll be the first ones to tell you like, yo, we're not New York and we're not Boston. We do it the Hartford way. Love it. You know what I mean? We, we have our own little style to it too. So um, yeah, I love it. For sure. But I think I was saying when we talked talk before, you guys have your own tool, you know, the Hartford hook. Yes, for sure. You for know? sure. Shout out to Capital City, you know, for and sure. Absolutely. I, uh, I actually just uh, just before this episode, just kind of watching some videos and, and looking up some stuff on Hartford. I was watching some videos of the of the Hartford hook. So we don't we don't carry any. I don't know if you guys carry any, Johnny. No, I, I have a question though. What's up? Uh, as a truckie, mm. what is your favorite tool and why is it in ads? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so funny. Again, it's so funny. Like Connecticut, it just it stops right there, right? Like. <laughs> I've like what it hasn't been until like a year or two ago where I even saw a Boston ads. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but it's so funny, man. Just how how Connecticut we take things from one place and things from another place. But 
you know. Yeah. Um, but it's yo, that's a super dope tool though. You know what I mean? And um, Johnny's Johnny's a big ads yeah. guy. Big ads guy. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I'm getting I'm getting into it too. I just got <laughs> I just got my first one. Um it's it's a uh, not quite the full Boston ads. It's uh it's the Metro ads guy. It's got a it's got a striking uh striking side on on the tool, but it's good. I took it's it in my I first can't. my first call last night actually with Barry. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I I can confirm I, I slowly shuffled over to him. I was like, hey, <laughs> It's a nice ad. We uh, <laughs> Barry and I just just recently ended up back on the same. We started on the same engine together, and uh, so we just gotcha. recently ended up on the same group, but we're opposite sides of the city. So mm-hmm. I saw him, and I was just like, "It's happening! It's happening!" <laughs> oh my god! Okay, it's happening! Everybody, stay calm. What's the procedure, everyone? You know, <laughs> yeah. just getting all, all, right, all excited. But you know, it's funny how that works out, man. Like you know, you you just don't see too many like Boston ads out here. You know what I mean? Yep. Unless, mm-hmm. unless someone like is really into, you know, um, like the Metro Boston kind of thing. So, right. um, yeah. you know, so again, I haven't seen, I've only seen like one or two ever, you know, so. Um, Johnny's yeah, going to yeah. put one in the mail <clears throat> tomorrow. That's really cool though. So uh, yeah. b- before, before I rudely interrupted with that great question, <laughs> uh, I, th- I think we were getting on about, uh, so what were you, we were just going to talk about the, what was it? The Connecticut hook? Is that what we were calling it? Yeah. Hartford so. Hook, yeah. So I don't. I mean, I'm be honest. I don't know anything about that. So give me, give me some education. So a little, a little history on it. Again, shout out to Capital City. I don't have any stake in that company, man. So you know, I'm not. So this is just free advertisement. But um, the story goes: um, the shop kind of invented our machine shop, our like mechanic shop, kind of invented that tool. You know. Okay. Um, and then they kind of implemented it on the line. You know, and you know what? And, you know, guys. You know, guys can talk shit about it, whatever, ice scraper or whatever. But, like, let me, <laughs> let me tell you something, bro. Like, when it comes to plaster and laugh, I'd, I'm, I'd be hard-pressed to see any any tool that does as good as that. Yeah, dude. I was watching the um, I was watching the videos on it yesterday, like I said. And uh, it, it really seemed like it does a – like, the guy was like, you're going to get your job done a lot quicker and use a lot less energy. And uh, 100%. It actually seemed, yeah, it actually seemed like it was uh, a pretty good tool. I'm trying to see if I can just quickly grab a, a photo of it here. Um, I'll work on it. And I'll throw it up if I if I get it. But um, yeah, so definitely a cool cool blend of cultures down down in Hartford. No, absolutely, and coincidentally too, with the new ladder fort, the Raymond Street stick. You know, they added Boston rakes to it. You know. Oh really? Oh okay. And so like and and. Everyone who have asked who has tried it, they love them. You know what I mean? Yeah, they love them. So yeah. definitely, like to your point, very much so a, a blend of both cultures. You know, right? And I think that's 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 what makes you guys unique. You know, you're you're between these two fire cultures, and in that you've created your own. Mm-hmm. So that's that's really cool. I, I remember when when we first met up and we were talking. I think that's one of the the coolest things about Hartford is like when you were saying like. We don't have a Boston style. We don't have a New York style. We have a Hartford style. I was like, sure. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty, pretty fucking cool. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it, uh, it gives a little pride, you know what I mean? For sure. Yeah. Can you guys see that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Dang. Cool. Is this a Spanish Inquisition? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Yeah, it looked it looked pretty sick. Like I said, you just, you punch it in, uh, punch it in flat through the lath, and turn it, and it, it pulls right down. So uh, I'd be interested. Okay, I'd yeah, be interested yeah, yeah. in trying one out. Try one out, yeah, for sure. Try one out. Yeah, I'm always down to try, try a new one. tool. You know That's what I mean? Cool, man. Um, for sure. It kind it kind it kind of looks like an edger that I use. Uh, <laughs> yeah, does, yeah, dude, it does look like uh, like edge in the landscape. Yeah, you're honestly. I, you know, you're gonna, I don't have mulch beds, so I lied about that. You know, well, you know, but like I said, man, when it comes to plaster and lath, like, oh, yeah, that tool, you know, there's I'm hard pressed to see any tool that does as much work as that, just, you know, just puts in the work. You know, obviously, Johnny's, you know, obviously, Johnny's like, fuck you, it's an ad. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, let's go. Yeah. If you go to the roof, you know, a New York hook, you know, that's definitely the standard, standard thing, yeah, you know, but yeah, um, but yeah. It's it's definitely it's definitely a tool for sure. Yeah, that's awesome, cool man. Um, so Hartford's similar to a lot of New England in the type of building construction you guys have, right? So you guys, when we were talking, it sounds like you guys see a lot of the same building construction that we see up here. So two and a half to four story wood frame and brick is like your bread and butter. 
Is that right? 100, 100%. Yeah. So you sent me a couple of photos. I'm just going to throw them up, up here. Um, and we don't, in, in my city, and I don't know if Johnny does, but we don't have anything quite like this open. Um, do you guys can see that? No. Oh, up now. Yeah, there you go. Just just like rows of three story bricks. Yeah, no, yeah, we don't got anything like that. No, we have a lot of like we have a lot of three story bricks in Cambridge, but nothing that like kind of set up quite like this. Um, and so this is like a lot of your your city is this, and then you sent me. Let's see, this is something we see just an absolute shit ton of in our city, and I'm sure Johnny does in Stone yeah. too. This is this is like. Oh, yeah. the massachusetts bread and butter right here like triple deckers you know yeah. um Sorry. flat roofs that are cock lofts or you get the like two and a half stories where the roofs are peaked because they built the living space into the attic um those are those are like the bread and butter stuff not only for us but obviously for you guys in in a lot of uh a lot of new england so obviously there are some considerations that are pretty specific especially when you talk about fighting fires on in these like kind of specific buildings you know what i mean Yep. Um, absolutely. So I know, so coming on, the idea was to talk about the, you know, like the culture of Hartford, a little bit about Hartford itself. And then, um, none of us are truckies. And so we mm -hmm. thought it'd be cool to get some, um, just some general guidelines or thoughts on like first do truck company operations. For sure. Um, so do you want to talk us through like, like I know that, that the roles inside the truck vary. So like the officer has a specific function and the driver has a specific function. The backseat guys have a specific fun function. But before you even talk about like that, you want to talk about like positioning. Uh, people love to say, uh, and with good reason, obviously, that you position, you don't park, right? Yeah. Yeah. You want to talk to us about uh, positioning a, a truck and maybe the difference between positioning a mid-mount tower versus a you know rear-mount aerial? For sure. Um, so let me just preface by, by saying this. I'm not, I'm not a driver, right? So, you know, let me, I'm all about transparency. I'm not a driver. Real quick. And I'm definitely not, definitely not the best driver out there. But Real quick, let me just uh, interrupt you and say that you guys have another um, piece of your culture down there is that you guys have bid spots for drivers, right? And it's a promotion. That is a promoted position. Yeah, yes, which is which is sick. So um, anyway, yeah, yeah, continue. So um, with that being said, you know, I did drive often enough in definitely my, in my early days on the truck. So um, I definitely have a little, a little bit of an opinion. But uh, I think the big thing when it comes to positioning, especially for, for a rear mount, is just like trying to get your turntable underneath the wires, right? Like that's probably the, the biggest thing. If you can't get your turntable underneath the wires, then you're just kind of SOL. You know what I mean? Right. Um, so... And obviously, you know, you, you um, they talk about trying to get two sides of the building. You know, that's obviously um, very important as well. Right. You know, um, <clears throat> now, you know, there's definitely some some talks on there, whether, you know, beaching is right, beaching is not right. So I'm so all I'm going to say is just follow your departmental directors. But for us, it's it's if if you can get in an aggressive position or an inside position, getting your turntable underneath the wires, then it's definitely a courage to do so. You know, so, you know what I mean? so you're saying like yeah. if, if the option was to, there's a whole, like, I'm pretty sure there's like a whole social media page on called beach, the front lawn, but yeah. if the way to get your turntable under the wires was to drive up and beach the lawn, then go for it. But if you can 100%. get your turntable now, under without, then you don't need to do that. For sure. But it's all about knowing, knowing your departmental directives and what you're going to get in trouble for. So right. if you got people hanging, you know what I mean? You got a fire; it's, it's blown out of seventeen windows. Then, you, yeah, brother, you know, get it, get it on the lawn, get underneath the turntable, yep. make the roof. You, you know what I mean? Right. So it's all about the risk. You know what I mean? If you're going to food in the stove for the seventh time, I'm not gonna, you know, right? Like, you know, yeah. run over someone's bush. You know what I mean? For no reason. You know, so right. it's it's all about just kind of calculating like what is the is the right move for that. And that's kind of with um, everything we do, right? Like. Same thing with like yeah. opening windows to vent food on the stove. You're not going to take a window. You know what I mean? You try and trying to open it, put a Smoke fan it, in yeah. versus, you know, having to vent for real. 
for sure. That that would be that would be fun, I guess. Though, <laughs> I mean, there <laughs> food. There there are people out there that seem like their only job is breaking windows when they get on the fire ground. You know what I mean? Um, not gonna yeah, yeah. not gonna lie. Yeah. I, I think that's one of those things. Like as you as you learn and like grow as a fireman, you realize like breaking shit is a lot of fun. But the less I can break, generally is you know kind of the better, especially if it's not a real well, emergency. Yeah. Um, so, so I had, ri- I had written down cause you sent me like your notes and you had said like aggressive inside out. And so that's what you were talking about right there is being aggressive, getting yeah. that turntable underneath wires. And and you said that's more for rear mount or is that also applicable for your, uh, so, um, so again, a lot of my experience is, is on a mid mount tie ladder. So that's kind of where my point of view is coming from. Yep. But, um, I would say for rear mount, it, I mean, the basic premise is the same, right? If you don't have your turntable un- underneath the wires as much as possible because it's going to be very limited to what you can get. You right. know what I mean? So I've seen a lot of times guy like what they do is they kind of like pull past the house and then kind of like reverse, reverse, kind of reverse underneath the wires. So they're able to kind of get up and shoot, you know, yep. to, to kind of reach their objective. Or, or a lot of times what I've seen them do is they've kind of stopped short. You know right. what I mean? And they, and they kind of like, um, like a house short and they kind of shoot the gap, shoot in between the lines or shoot right underneath the wires and they're kind of able to kind of reach their objective that way. You know? Right. So, um, so at least from my perspective, that's kind of what I've seen, I've seen them do. Right. Sure. And you talked about a little bit in your notes about uh, pulling up short. So I know I was just having a conversation the other day. One of the lieutenants on my group um, uh, is a ladder lieutenant and he likes you know, he's like, he's a great like teacher. Right. So he, he likes sending texts out and he'll send stuff out about like, you know, a fire and he'll show like positioning and talk about like, st- like coming up short versus like pulling up too far and then having to, obviously if you're doing it intentionally to back up to get your table under, that's one thing, but like making that slow approach and not overshooting. Cause it's a lot harder to correct once you've overshot, yeah. overshot the house. Um, and then you also obviously, um, in addition to like overhead obstacles, being a ladder truck, you really got to pay attention to to obstacles on your side and obstacles on the ground or soft spots sure. on the ground, right? For sure. So, in terms of pulling up short, um, again, I'm not even a master of this, but like it's a fine line between taking too long, but and still, but still trying to size it up, right? You know what I'm saying? So, pulling up short, get out the truck, see and see what's going on. You know what I mean? Where right. the power lines, where the cars, where the sewer grates, you know, whatever. You know, but if you take too long, you're going to have sevens, 14s of fucking um, 11s stretching their line. You know what I mean? And, th- and now that kind of fucks up, like, how you want to position your truck. Right. So it's a fine line between taking your time and still trying to be aggressive and still trying to be in the game and position the truck in, in the correct way. Right. You know what I mean? But yeah. I would definitely say stop short, get out the truck, and fully, fully size it up to see, like, what are your options. You know what I mean? Whether it's pulling past. You know, um, getting an aggressive position, or or what whatnot. Right. Um, Do you guys? I know yeah. some departments Eric. have policies where they actually, when they're pulling up to fire scene, they have somebody get out and actually walk the trucks in. Do you guys do that? Yo, honestly, I'm not gonna lie to you, man. Sometimes you drive and people like dudes are just dudes are just out, and you're just kind of forced to kind of create a diamond out of like a, a pile of shit. You know right. what I mean? And it's, <laughs> and it's a lot of pressure. And again, I don't, I am not the one yeah. to say I have it perfect because I don't, right. but it's a, it's a lot of pressure, you know, but you know, with practice and always when you go to a building, it's just kind of size it up. Okay. What are my options here? Okay. I, I have option A, option B, option C. Right. You know? Well, so before we get too far away from beach in it though, let me ask you a question. I know. So you guys are obviously a city. Um, are you guys, 100 percent on sewer or do you guys have districts where people have um septics uh what do you mean so like if your house is connected to the sewer or if you have your own septic tank where people you know what i mean where the shit flows i think it's a little bit of both just it kind of depends on where we're in the city we're talking yeah right if you're like okay the resident i mean everywhere's residential but definitely yeah the family dwellings and like the far ends of the city i would assume right are more septic tanks right yeah. And then, okay. That could be. It could be because there are some places that are just 100% sewer. Mm-hmm. So one of the big things that we have to worry about um, in Stoughton uh, in, in a lot of towns, like even like the town that I live in, which is next to Stoughton and Easton, a lot of people still have um, septic and they're not anywhere near like Yeah, sewer. same with my so, house. So um, you if, know you beach, I mean? if you beach yeah, my front so lawn, coming up you... on, 
probably go right through it. You know, you know, yeah. But you know what? Though? You'd be into it. Yeah. But then that's that's one thing you got to. That's part of your size up, right. right? You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe if it's wet out, you know, and, and the grass is a certain a certain texture, maybe I'm not willing to to put it in a, an extremely aggressive position. You right. know what I mean? Yeah, right. Or, right. or if I do do it, maybe I'll do it on on the on the non-working side. You know what I'm saying? Right. Sure. You know, yeah, I got you. Know, you. All these things you kind of have to like think about to get the most optimal position. Yeah, it's like a million you know? small decisions to to For sure. yeah. just kind of get going. Which is, I read. I actually read an article. This is a while ago, but it was in Firehouse Magazine about how like the concept of beaching it is actually really like a northeastern culture thing because like oh, there was a guy that had had made a point from yes that had made a point he was like from a s- southern coastal community where like the um the ground is mostly like sand and like mm. not oh, yeah. particularly stable yeah. uh, and he had made a comment like hey you should never be on the lawn and someone said like hey this picture i think it was actually from chelsea mass they said hey this picture was taken in january like the the ground is frozen solid so it was like one of those uh things that's kind of uh, unique I, to northeast I, culture where like people might see a picture and they'd yeah. be like, oh, they're like, you should never do that. But in fact, it's an incredibly stable platform. One, so I didn't know that, but I remember that frozen, um, yeah. that photo and like the discussion about being on a on the frozen lawn. Yeah, I remember seeing that. No, yeah, for sure, for sure. It's it's so funny, man. Like, the, the, there's two things that really separate firemen, right? Like politics and tactics. Those those two <laughs> things, like firemen will like fight about. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that's that. good. I've um, never heard that, but that's that's cool. That's good. We're putting that. Yeah. We're putting that on a shirt. <laughs> So, like, you know, tactics and politics. No, for sure. So, like, you know, definitely when you go on these forums and you see what people are saying, you got to take it with a grain of salt. Sometimes people, they work in a very small bedroom community and, like, maybe they're only allowed certain things. Right. You know what I mean? So, um, sure. I'm very blessed to work for an agency where they allow they allow the firemen or, or the drivers to kind of, like, like, like do their thing. Right. You know what I mean? So, that's awesome. Yeah. Sure. Um, mm-hmm. And then uh, you want to talk real quick about um, short jacking? Yes, yeah, short jacking. So obviously, if you're gonna short jack, you know it maybe maybe because you have a car or a sewer grade or curb, like whatever, you know. So um, just you know, just definitely, if you, if you work on a short jack, I'm sure you've heard this before. You have to do it on the on the non-working side, right? right? I'm not so I'm not gonna short jack on the side that I'm working off of, right? Because you know, it's maybe some trucks may maybe they'll like depending on like on an older truck, they'll you probably even tip the truck, you know, but um, definitely on these newer trucks, there's definitely safeguards and stuff like that to kind of like um, keep you safe. But short jacking is definitely a good and viable tactic or method to kind of get an optimal spot. You know what I mean? I think that's <laughs> another one I've I've not partaken in because I have no stake in the in the game in that. But uh, that's another one I feel like I've seen on the interwebs where people are very opinionated, even if you're on the non-working side, like very opinionated as to whether or not you short jack. And again, like you well, said, it's all, all down to the communities you work. Like, you know, you work tight sure. streets. You, you may only be able to exactly. get your outriggers out by short jack on one side. You know what I mean? So. Exactly. 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 Um, and, and that's what I like about doing this and having people come on, like whether, you know, five or six years or whether you've been on 25 years is everybody has a little different experience and work somewhere a little bit different. So you just kind of get, I feel like the more well-rounded you are and hear why people do things in all kinds of places, you're a lot, a lot less likely to immediately be like, that's wrong. You know what I mean? No, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Absolutely. But short sure, Jack is everyone definitely. Has, everyone has that unique operational environment, you know, like right. what might work in Hartford might not work in Cambridge or what might work in Stoughton or, you know, or like we have the Northeast fire culture and then you go down to South Carolina and they don't leave the street because the, the soil's, you know, like not necessarily stable. So like you were saying, it's all reflective on, on your department, how they run things and what, what works. Right. Absolutely. 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 But yeah, <laughs> short jacking is definitely, I, I wouldn't even say it's a go-to, but it's definitely a tactic that is definitely done daily. Yeah. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so let's talk a little bit about, about, um, first do considerations. So for like, like tactical considerations for like initial operations. So like you, um, either as like the officer or right in the back step, sizing up the construction, Mm -hmm. talking, you know, like obstacles that you're going to face. So we talked a little bit, you know, beforehand about boarded up windows and burglar bars. Um, and then kind of like what the truck's role for Hartford is on a fire scene. So you guys, 
force an entry? Or are you guys doing the search? Are you guys going to the roof or splitting up or whatever? So you want to just like kind of run through like first do like operational considerations right off the jump? Yeah. So to put it simply, like our first, if we first do, our, our job is, is to get to the fire floor, right? That's that's definitely what we're going to do. Um, we're, we're, gonna, we're definitely going to force entry, try to, try to get to the fire floor and, and start doing a primary. Um, you guys have had like, you guys have had a whole um, episode about search, right? So I don't want to like, like kind of like talk about that too much, but there's just, just a few things that like, I think that like, um, that you guys really touched on that I think is kind of important, right? So one thing about, is about searching out of the line, you know? Um, I, I'm all about it, all about it. I'll, I'll do it right now, but there's a couple things you have to think about, you know, first thing is <clears throat> you got to pay attention to what that first or second do engine is doing when you're going to search ahead of the line. You know what I mean? Yep. Like, you know, if you have a, you know, a go get an engine company behind you, all right, bet, you know, you know, let's, let's kind of go do it. You know, if you have an engine company that's not so, you know, go get them, maybe that's going to force me to reevaluate what what I'm going to do, you know? Right. <clears throat> um, second thing, it's kind of the same thing, but like if they're having trouble getting water, right? Or if uh, they're not getting that forward progression with the line or if, um, or, and maybe it's a hoardy condition, whatever the case may be, but like, if they're having whatever, of an, whatever issue, again, maybe that's going to start, maybe I should start thinking about how far I'm going to overextend myself. I think, you know I, mean? I think those are great points. So, you know, we talk about being aggressive firemen, but we have to be smart firemen too. You know what I mean? And like, for sure, if you're, sure. if you're pushing like a real sketchy, hot spot and you're listening to the radio mm-hmm. and they're calling like, Hey, you know, the, the hydrant's frozen or like, you know, we're not making headway. Like you, you've already gone up and conditions have changed. We're not making headway. You know, like you said, we have hoarding conditions. Like you have to, you have to then make that decision. Like, okay, is it, 2 a.m. with all the cars in the driveway and like little kids upstairs or is it 12 in the afternoon with no cars in the driveway and you know the neighbor called this in because nobody reported it you know what i mean like are we what are, what are we risking for what are we what are we potentially going for and like i think those are all like really smart points and something that a lot of people don't realize when you talk about like firefighting is like you have to pay attention and make decisions based off a lot of things, a lot of factors that surround you, not just like your immediate, you know, spot. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about too, I mean, it's kind of the same thing, but like even going to the floor above, it's, it's kind of the same thing, right? Like, you know, if they're having an issue, maybe I'm going to reevaluate. Right. Right. If I'm, if we're here first and maybe the engine, you know, they're coming from like out of position, you know, getting, getting fuel, whatever, again, that's going to affect you know, my, you know, my method of operation. Right. You know, um, um, uh, another thing I want, wanted to talk about in terms of first do is VES. Right. So another interesting thing about the Harvard fire department is that's not really in our operational doctrine. You know, that's not in, in drill school. We, you know, you were, you were not taught that, you know, you know what I mean? It's right. not something we do. You know? Not saying guys wouldn't do it or, or, or it won't be done, but, VES is not something that we're really like taught like that, you know, and it's because like we really take priority in like trying to um, take control of the interior stairwell. You know what I mean? That's that is the that is our main goal: control that main route of egress and try to control that interior stairwell. Right. And because of our staffing, you know what I mean? Like VES isn't even really something that we're even like thought about. Right. You know. Interesting. I think that's I think that's fairly common. Like. Like yeah. VES isn't, to my knowledge, something that they teach in drill school. Like mm-hmm. you guys never did it, right? No, I mean I think we talk about it, but it's not like it's not a tactic that you practice. It's it's yeah. more like a, it, it's more like a, I don't want to say last case scenario, but very specific scenario. So like, no, for sure. For so sure. like you know, um, for for some reason, like flow path. I I have a specific. I have a specific scenario. So we had a we had a fire light up on a porch. It ripped through the whole house. There was reports that maybe there was a person sleeping in their bedroom. Um, you know, we had I think we had an ambulance at the hospital, and we had an engine company locked up on another call. The ladder crew showed up to this house fire first. The thing was ripping, and that was their tactic 
someone said, I think he's in that bedroom. So they broke the window, went in. And so they do, you know, so we train V E I S, right? Yeah. We don't like train it. We talk a lot about it. Yeah. So we isolate. And so that's what someone did. They went in, you know, and then, you know, vented, isolate, I mean, entered, isolated and, you know, looked and, yeah. and no one was right. there. So, um, but that's like the specific scenario. Like they, they were on scene with, uh, three guys, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. That, you know, eventually turned into 20 something guys with our second alarm and next two companies, right. you know, uh, I mean, we were only showing up with 11 to 13 or 11 to 15 in Stoughton with our own guys, right. but mm-hmm. that's like the specific scenario. And, and when you have the kind of staffing levels that you guys do, it's, I see exactly what you're saying, Eric, you guys, you guys are kind of, I don't want to say like beyond in a sense, but you have the ability to kind of even, do a lot even if more. your first no, do well, pumps so. out of service, your second do yeah. pumps so much closer that, you know, cause, cause obviously in, in, uh, just, uh, little credit to, um, to chief Nardelli in his, uh, in one of his speeches the other day, he was talking about getting people out of a house and the number one preferred method is through the interior stairs always. 100%. Yeah. If you can't 100%. do that in the bucket or on the aerial and the last resort is pe- taking people over a ground ladder. So it's one of those things like, yeah. you know, it's gotta be that specific scenario to do. Cause you're also, if you're V, yeah. if you're doing VES, you're also potentially putting yourself in a flow path as soon as you pop that window and, and get in there. So it's all, all those considerations definitely have to be, you know, well thought right. out. Right. And, and again, just going back to like being a smart, smart firefighter, like, yeah. you know, taking into consideration everything that's going on. Sure. Um, do you guys, uh, two questions. One is what do you guys get on a, on like a struck box? So, so I don't know what you guys, so for us, we call it a struck box. Um, if it's a like reported fire, um, or like smoke in the building, um, uh, before the work and fire, it's a struck box. So like, uh, for, for us, we get three pumps, two trucks, a rescue squad and a division. Johnny, what do you guys get on a struck box for, for a struck box? We've get, we get, um, our C5, which is our captain who's running the shift, we get two engines and a ladder and uh, the ambulance. Okay. So we basically get, well, yeah, for a, uh, so we have a couple of different ones. We have, just for alarms, we have a still box, but yeah, yeah smoke in the building, box, like box re- seven, reported every, actual. everybody's going. Yeah, reported actual fire. Yeah, everybody's going. So you, you guys, oh, you yeah. guys put and out then, the whole town, Johnny. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And then if it's a structure fire, um, you know, I think we, that's when we start getting coverage in. And then once you start striking the alarms, that's when we're starting getting more people to sit to gotcha. the scene. Gotcha. What do you, what do you guys um, get there? For, for an initial assignment or like alarms activated, we'll get three engines, two trucks, the TAC, which is our heavy rescue and then a district. Right. Yeah. If it comes in, if it comes in that smoke in the building, um, then it's just four engines, two trucks, the TAC and a district. So you guys and add then, an engine. Yeah, okay. exactly. And then when the working fires call, like I, I get on scene, hey, we got to work a fire. Then, um, then at the at the at the end, it's going to be five engines, two trucks, attack, and two districts. Okay, so ours is slightly different. So when we when we get on for a working fire, it adds a pump mm-hmm. and a truck, so we'll end up with four and three, and then it, it gets both yeah. of our squads. Um, gotcha, gotcha. It's it's all about how was how was dispatched. It's oh all yeah, about how was dispatched? Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? Because Typically, if, if if I mean it's happened, we we can go for our alarms activated, and we end up having a fire. I'm like, hey, hey, we you got a working fire. Then they'll dispatch the the two additional engines, and then the district. You right. Know what I'm and then if you come in to go for smoke in the building, which is four engines, and I'm like, hey, we got a fire. Then they're gonna dispatch the extra engine and and then the district. Right. You know, but when the working fire is called, five engines, two trucks attacking. District, okay. And two when do you get so you don't get a third truck until your third uh, second alarm? Yeah, we don't get a third truck to our second. Okay. Um, when you guys roll up on scene, do you guys split your crew for on the truck? So, so do you? Does your operator always stay with the truck? It, like, I I know, and again, I, I'm not talking from experience because I don't work on a truck company for us, but I know that I've seen where like two guys might go in or do forcible entry and then two guys stay one on the turntable and one goes to the roof. Um, different, different tactics like that. Do you guys stay together as a, as a crew or do you guys split it all? So I, I can only speak for a tower ladder cause I've, cause that's where I'm assigned. Um, 
but um, a tower ladder generally, um, the officer, the um, because we were at four, right? right. The, the officer, the driver, the roof man, and the eyes man, right? So, if we're first due, all three of us, right? The roof, the roof man, the driver, and the eyes man, we're gonna go in and into a primary, and typically, uh, the ladder driver will kind of stay with the truck, okay? You know, um, and then before, and then before we, this whole strike, this whole strike stick thing, the second due truck will kind of get in our bucket. And then, you know, and then it kind of gets so similar to like yeah. some departments where like your first engine runs tank and then the second engine lays yeah. into you kind of kind of situation, but with a, with a ladder to it, yeah. you know? Uh, yeah, no, for sure. For sure. Uh, you want to talk quickly the, about like sizing up? Crews, we, we really don't split crews like that. You know, right. I know the FDNY is very like inside team, outside team based. It's not right. It's not really like that with us. You know what I mean? It's, it's either we're all doing something. Or, or we're not doing something. It's not, I wouldn't say it's super like that for us either because we don't often run four. So we, we have four assigned to our ladders, but we have three man minimums. And mm-hmm. most of the time you're running three, right? Just vacation, sick, you know, whatever. So, yeah. um, so I think, and again, this is not from experience, but I think driver usually stays, puts the stick up and the other two go. And then I've seen when they are running four that the driver will stay with the roof person or, or whatever. And then the yeah. other two will go. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's, uh, again, that's all just like departmental procedure. Johnny, what do you guys roll out of the station with when you run your ladder? Do you have a minimum? Yeah, it's two. Honestly. Yeah. So we're working on, uh, what we potentially what we want to do. If we get our staffing up enough, then we won't have to cross man our ambulance or, ambulances into the ladder we'll have a, a, a staff ladder crew but i think the eventual reality for us will be um a staffed ladder with three and that would be including one officer, nice which would be great nice. mm-hmm. when i yeah. when i worked so my first job i worked a small town we ran six on duty and um and initially when i got there there was no two-man minimum on the on the ladder they they right. it was a 75 foot stick it was a pretty small truck um when they got the new one it was a uh 105 foot pierce and uh and they went to a two two person minimum but it was also a quint so like you're showing up oh. on a quint do you guys have do you guys have quints down there eric do you see uh, hartford obviously doesn't but do you see them around any of the suburbs so so it's funny because te- technically all of our trucks are quints technically because like, they they have um, a tank on them. Oh, so you know, all your all your ladders have water. They, they have water. They don't have hose, but they have water. Interesting. Okay. Sure. Gosh, Interesting. Yeah. It's just we don't use them in that capacity, right? You know, but technically, it, it is a quint. No shit, a quint. I would. I, you know what I'm saying? I didn't. I didn't even catch that when I was like looking at uh, any of the photos at all. Um, yeah. yeah. So my old department, it was a quint. Like it had, you know, supply line. It had a couple of Matty Dales, a two and a half off the back. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, you show up with two and I don't really remember having any standard procedure because who the hell knew what you were doing when you showed up, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. I, mean, I mean, there's a big debate, like it's Quint this, Quint that, man. I mean, like, yo, the Quint is, that's where the fire service is going, but it's all about how you use a truck. Yeah, it's also about you know, man, yeah. manpower. Like, it's a cool truck, exactly. but you got to put enough people on to use it. You know, for sure, for sure. Yeah. And for us, technically, it is a quint, you know, but we don't have any holes on it. Right. All we ha- all we have is tools. You know what I mean? So, right. There we go. Um, interesting. You want to talk about like um, where you? No, go ahead. No, no, no. You you had mentioned splitting the crew, um, and I was just kind of thinking while you were talking. There's only one time I, I could think of that we were that we really split our crew, and that's um, that's if we're second due, and say if I'm the Irons man, right? So and we're second due, and and the officer and the roof man are in the uh, the opposing truck bucket, and they're and they're going to the roof, a peaked roof. Yep. Right then, I would probably link up with like an engine company or something. Okay. You know, you know, help force entry, pop only, doors inside, or whatever. Yeah, exactly, but that's the only time that I could think of where we're really splitting. You know what I mean? Okay. Other than that, we're definitely staying together. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, no. <laughs> listen, man, we're here to hear. We're here to to listen to you. So. It, and you said peaked roof, so is that like specifically a peaked roof assignment? Because you're going to put all three on the roof if it's flat. Yeah, if it's if it's a flat roof, um, all three of us are going to go up there. Probably the, the driver is going to probably meet us up there too. But like on a peaked roof, it's already kind of a little 
squarely. So it's, it's definitely going to be like the offs and, and uh, the roof man going up. Right. Uh, someone had told me recently, and I, I, I didn't know if it was true that FDNY rarely goes on peaked roofs. I don't, I don't know why, but yeah, yeah. that is, I've, I've, I've heard that as well. Yeah. <clears throat> which is I just one of those things I didn't even consider. Like it's so, I don't want to say routine, but it's so common here that I, I didn't even think anything of it. Well, I, I don't know, man. To them, it's super taboo and I, I don't get it. Yeah. I, I don't. Yeah. Yeah. I think they were big on, uh, they were big on, uh, ventilating like gable ends and stuff right. like that. Yeah. And, uh, but even, um, in, uh, the collapse of burning buildings book, that's when I asked, that's when I asked chief about it and I'm like, well, why, what are they talking about with this? He goes, honestly, I don't think they have a lot of peak roofs there anyways. Yeah. They, I think they yeah. do mostly flat roofs. Exactly. Yeah. All those, like all those mid rises and all that stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I just don't think I it's think a big it's, thing. Well, I think it's now to get into like Queens, I think where you get in a lot of like, those two and a half story with right. frames. You know? And that's where it is, is the half story stuff. You know, I mean, not, not yeah. just the half story stuff, but the half story stuff is like where you see a lot of the, a lot of the peaks dormers and all that stuff. Um, For sure. So if you guys show up first, do you're going inside your jobs to do the search, find, you know, for victims and for finding the fire, obviously. Um, mm-hmm. Who or what, what assignment would it be your second do truck? If you guys have like, do you guys have any standard policy that if you show up to a fire and there's burglar bars or boarded up windows that you like standard practices, you start removing them if you're operating on that floor? So our policy says that if you recognize that there's burglar bars, you're going you're gonna to start an additional company, right? Okay. It says, it says an additional company more often times than not, it's probably going to be the third truck. Okay. A third truck, okay. you know? So, me as a first two truck, am I addressing those burglar bars? No, I'm not addressing those burglar bars, you know. But again, um, talking about size up, it's just part of my size up, right? You know, if my burglar bars all all on this Bravo side or on this Delta side, I have to take a mental note. Like, okay, if we get jammed up, I know our only way out is uh is off the front or the back. Right. You know what I mean? So, again, and, taking and, that so that the, mental note about what you're doing and where you're going. Ab- absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think I was telling so, you before is like, we don't, I, I, I doubt you see them a lot in Stoughton. We don't see them a lot in Cambridge. Not that they're not there, but they're not super common. No, really? That, that's super interesting, man. That's super yeah, interesting. Barry, you, you see, see burglar bars a ton? Not really. I think there's a couple. So like on maybe on Cambridge street in East Cambridge, but yeah, no, they're, no, they're pretty I, rare. Like, nothing stands out in my even, mind. Even like yeah. I was saying, uh, like, you know, like roll down metal doors in front of the shops and stuff like that. We just, it's just yeah. not really, not really common at all for us. Really? I mean, you know, I don't know. Occasionally you'll see like the, the big metal, like gate style doors across, you know, yeah. but those are so like, those are pretty easy to get off. But like, you don't, you don't often see, not that they're not there and obviously loading docks and stuff for a different story. But like, yeah. as far as like, like anti theft deterrent type doors, we don't really see them a ton. You know, and, that, and that's kind of my point. Harvard's a little bit of a rough city, man. So sometimes you can have, have some issues with, uh, you know, with people trying to get, get into your building. Yes, yeah, so, absolutely. Um, and and yeah. definitely like the, the, the security kind of definitely reflects that. Whether it be burglar bars, board up windows, roll down gates. Right. You know what I mean? Just trying to put entry and try, yeah. and try to get in there. Right. Um, but Eric, as for, um, yes. Sorry. So if you guys roll up, say, and you see those burglar bars, like, is that something that the TAC unit would also address? Like if that second dude truck's coming a little bit behind? Like where where do they fall? Do they do like force entry and search as well, or like where? So, like how do they work with you guys? So um, I'm I'm not assigned there, so I'm hard pressed to t- to say what they do. But per our directives, yeah. um, they they kind of split up into two teams, right? So the drivers team goes to the floor above, right? So it's because we write floor, right? So the driver and one guy in the back go to the floor above, and the officer team and the one guy in the back goes to the fire floor. Okay. You know, so so that's kind of where they fought on a, at a typical fire. Um, would they gotcha. address, would they address burglar bars? I think it kind of just depends on the situation, but um, I would I would have to say no because um, our policy says if we have burglar bars, you know, there no um, command's probably going to re- uh, request a third truck right. or first probably is, is going to request a third truck, and then they can kind of like start softening the building. And you know what I mean, throwing throwing ground ladders and, and everything else. Right. But um, do you guys yeah, do you guys dispatch company, them? Not, 
Do you guys dispatch an automatic writ for work and fire? So our um, our director says the fourth due engine is writ. Okay. Fourth due engine is writ. So you know if we're fourth due, okay, then you know we show up, we get we get the writ cash. You know what I mean? You know we stand by the command post and kind of do kind of do the whole thing. Gotcha. Um, there's kind of been some like um some talks about like how invested you want writ to be, whether you're throwing ground ladders. You know, or or do you want them addressing the burglar bars? You know what I mean. So there's been some kind of talks with that, but um, at the very least, you're gonna be setting up the you're gonna be setting right. up the the real cash and, and be by the command. That's you know? that's kind of yeah. one of the uh, that's kind of where I was I was getting with the question. So we we definitely do working writ. Um, yeah, you know, we'll throw ladders, soften the building. Um, but the idea is that you have at least one person that's with command in case you know the team gets activated, and then anything you're doing while you're working is something you should be able to like immediately drop. And I don't know if burglar bars falls in that category. You know what I mean? Like you could, yeah, you could put a, sure. you I could think... put a ladder down or against the building real quick and walk away from it. I don't know. You know, I'm not, I haven't had a lot of experience dealing with burglar bars, so it's not something I know how quickly you could kind of just yeah. stop that task. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, like I said, there's definitely, there's a couple of different methodologies behind it. Some, some chiefs like it, some chiefs don't like it, or right. some company officers like it, some companies don't. You know, and I'm not here to say to say what I do and don't like, but um, there's definitely some different methods to it. You know, yeah. Um, but I, I will say this: like, it's nice to know if you're on the inside and you got a ground ladder um, sooner than later. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, so. absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Um, so let's talk about like going into the building, right? So, truck company, yeah. you go in. Um, we talked about prioritizing the stairwell, so that's uh, mm -hmm. controlling it. Um, prioritizing it. And then I, I kind of added to it um, just from your notes is clearing it. So making sure that it's not yeah. getting clogged up with people, you know what I mean? That are just standing around for sure, for sure. doing nothing. For sure. um, and then you had mentioned also in your notes, like areas of refuge, which is something like mm. I've recently had some, some good conversations with people about. Um, and I don't, not that I don't think everybody thinks about areas of refuge, but it's kind of like a specific mindset when you're, when you're working somewhere about like taking note of areas of refuge or places you can get to and stuff yeah. like that. You want to talk about that just, just yeah. a little bit, especially working so ahead of a hose things. line. So two things, right? So searching for fire, right? So I think a lot of times yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to answer your question, but, um, but um, I think a lot of times people kind of confuse you want to search for searching for victims, right? Like we're obviously here for victims. I'm not, I'm not saying that, you know, right. like definitely like search for people, but, as a first dude truck, especially if there's like just just smoke showing, I'm trying to find the fire. Like that's what yeah. I'm trying to look for. But once I find the fire, I can start searching back. You know what I mean? <clears throat> or or go or search past it or go above it. You know what I right. mean? So 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 that's definitely one thing I, I wanted to add, right? And in terms of an area of refuge, particularly when you're searching um the floor above, right? Or you know what, it could even be, you know, the same floor, right? You know, we make entry, we get we get inside. Fire starting to come into into the common hallway, you know, maybe maybe forcing the the adjacent apartment, right? You know what I mean, or or the department across. So okay, now we know if we get jammed up, we have we have an area where we can kind of like duck duck into, kind of regroup, right? You know, and right. you know, and, and that can be for the floor above or or the fire floor. You know what I mean, whatever. Right. <laughs> so it's, I, it's I mean, definitely just... good to have it somewhere you can kind of you know protect yourself from the fire, regroup. You know what I mean, and and kind of weigh your options from there. Get out of the flow path. No, nah, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, I was just talking recently to. Uh, so we had a um, a. I don't remember. I don't remember how tall it is. Do you know the brick building on Concord Ave? Like two years ago. Very. Anyway, they had a. Uh, I think it's four or five story building. It's more than that because the fire was on the fourth, so I, I think it's six. Um, either way, it doesn't matter. So I was just talking recently to one of the guys, um, and he was kind of telling me about the fire. So they were, they made the push in, found the apartment, and then um, the water was coming behind them, and it was getting pretty hot. And they, they was talking about like popping that adjacent apartment door so that he could yeah. get in and and get away from that heat as the line was coming down, so they could put the fire out. You know, and uh, mm -hmm. that's like a, that's a really important thing to to be cognizant of if you're working ahead or above a hose line is like, if shit turns 100%. out, like, how am I out of here? Is it, am I going out a window? 
am I bailing out? Mm-hmm. Do I have like a, a room I can get in and just close the door? You know what I mean? Kind of situation. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's a big one. And, and again, that kind of falls into like paying attention to what the engine is doing. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Like if they're, you know, having trouble getting water, okay. Maybe I have to start thinking about more, like if we get jammed up, what are my options here? Right. Exactly. You know, and I think that kind of goes, rolls a little bit into the next part of this is like being familiar with like your, your building construction and kind of like expected Mm. fire behavior. Right. So, um, we, we're going to do a couple scenarios at the end of this with some of the, like you said, the two and a half story, three story brick and wood scenarios that are, that are fairly common, but knowing, knowing how fire behaves in a brick in like what's the risk, right? So like the risk is the pipe chases up those, those old bricks, right? Um, yeah. Is it a balloon frame? You know, you have smoke showing from the attic. You got to go look and make sure it's not a basement fire. You know what I mean? Or the two and a half story, like rear porches up and into the, into the cock loft type stuff. Um, so I think, you know, like understanding your building construction, being able to somewhat anticipate the, the behavior of the fire, what fires do, you know, can make a huge difference. Um, 100%. and then once you guys find the see the fire, complete searches, um, stuff like that, not talking about overhaul, cause we're not really going to get into that, but like, are you guys staying in the building, opening walls, opening ceilings? Is that like the second do trucks responsibility? What do you guys <laughs> go after? Uh, can you repeat the first part of the question? You saw you started to break up. A so if you're like, once you, once you've completed your search, um, either for yep. the fire or for victims, um, I'm, yep. you're staying in the building, I'm guessing is, is your next job opening walls and ceilings, trying to help the engine company out. 100%. 100%. Yep. Nice. Yep. No one, no one else is coming. It's us. You know? Yep. That's right. <laughs> and you, you got that, you got that, uh, ads. I mean, Hartford hook there with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 100%. 100%. Ready to do it. Um, what? Going back real quick um, to areas of refuge, we we talked about yes. it in your notes. Um, was knowing indicators that your environment is changing. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I'm not a, I'm not a big flow path guy. I really don't like that word, but like, <laughs> okay, because I said it like twelve times, so it's good. <laughs> no, but you know what? It, it, it is it is like a vi- like a, a valid word, right? So again, paying attention to your environment, paying attention to what the engine is doing. If 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 you're like, hey, we've been in here for a while with the wood out of line, like maybe we need to start kind of, you know, kind of finding that, that area of refuge or kind of searching our way back. You know what I right. mean? Especially if, if if it's getting hotter. You know what I mean? You you can, you know, you you can feel it. You know. Um, it's just is I think the biggest thing, man, is just to like for you to to see what's going on. To you get to slow down, listen, listen to where the fire is, see if it's getting darker, you know what I mean? And try to make these decisions right. that kind of like you know, that the most important. Right. You gotta you gotta <clears throat> understand, especially when your job is being away from the hose line, you gotta understand when you have to make moves. Like I said, like whether it's whether it's getting to, to uh, area refuge or, or if it's like time to go out the fucking window on a bailout kit or whatever the case is, you gotta, you gotta understand that. And I think like, like you're saying, like you can just feel, if you've ever been in the environment where it's like changing or really hot, you feel it like, you know, that pressure, the neutral yeah. plane starts dropping on you and like, it's, it's, it's burning so clean. You can see someone's like that, the white in someone's eyes. Like, yeah. for sure. you know, you know, something, you know, you know something's going on and, and that all comes with, you know, experience and, and, uh, and, getting in the buildings and stuff like that. But I think it's a really um, important part of being a truckie, you know? One thing I, I want to say too, if you got people trapped, man, all of this goes out the window. Bro. You know what I mean? You got people trapped, like, you know, do, do what you got to do. Yep. If you, if you got a fireman, like go get them. Obviously I'm saying that figuratively, not, not, not literally, right. you know what I mean? But like, you know, if you got people trapped on three, like I'm, I'm I'm going to three. Yeah. Like, we're, without a line. we're risking a lot to save a lot. You know what I mean? We know we got 100%. people up there. 100%. So I don't want, I don't want that to be, to like not be heard. Like, you know what I mean? For sure. Think about all these things. But when, when one of us is down and we, when we, we got kids trapped, you know what I mean? I'm going to, I already know what I'm doing. Right. You know, you know what I mean? Yep. Absolutely, <clears throat> so. man. 
And I think, I think, uh, I think we're oh, all, there you go. I like that. we're all on that same page where we, we, uh, we know the risks that we take, you know what I mean? And when, yeah, no the, when the appropriate time to make that risk and that pushes and when the appropriate time to say, Hey, Will's is, t-shirt is going to be structure path. and, and, uh, as much as I want to, I want to be in here and, and doing it, you know, it's not worth getting killed, you know? So aggressive, 100%. aggressive, but smart, I think is the, is the way to be, you know, um, the, the term, I've, the term I've been using is focused aggression. I like that. It's focused. Focus we have two t-shirts coming out of this one episode. <laughs> you know, I'm all about being aggressive, man. All about it. Right. All about it. Sometimes <laughs> flow path. <laughs> and he's going to wear focus aggression right next to me. <laughs> I'm, I'm all about being aggressive, man. But like, you have to be smart about it. Yeah. You know, you, like, you have to get to a point where like, okay, I'm making a conscious effort right. to, to make this decision. Right. Right? You know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, just the, the act of being aggressive, just to be aggressive, that's that's fun. But, like, that's also not the best right. way to go about it. Either. And that's you where I mean, you have to be honest with what's going on. Yeah. And that's where these, like, senior senior guys and girls come in, man. Like, those people that, you know, like, when you go on your first few fires, you don't even know if you're in a bad spot sometimes. You know what I mean? Like, everybody knows they're in a bad <laughs> spot when they're starting to roast. You know what I mean? But, like, yeah. you don't you don't necessarily know. You know, I, I uh, this this wasn't me, but um, my first apartment again. Um, they had a fire, and they had gotten called. Like nothing was showing. Huge, huge mansion, and uh, and they walked in. And I obviously wasn't there, so I heard it. You know, I heard it from the guy, so I don't have the whole entire story straight. But like a piece of ceiling had fell down, and like the senior guy that was there was like, uh, no, and they're like, what the hell, like there's nothing going on. Turned out that fire had been rolling in the attic for like hours and like within a few minutes that whole house was gone you know what i mean and 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 those people that have that experience that can uh that can be like uh no this isn't right you know what i mean like that's that's where that stuff is important and you start learning that stuff picking it picking it up you know what i mean Um, any other like it's like you always say you don't know what you don't know exactly yeah exactly yeah and if you think you do that's then you're dangerous um yeah any other specific like considerations you want to talk about we got a couple scenarios i thought it'd be cool to like go through um just as like from a truck first do truck perspective talk about like yeah um talk about like the yeah, fire 100%. um you know if you were rolling up on the first do truck like kind of what you do and we'll we'll throw our our piece of it in too but kind of just getting the perspective of a truck you you want to uh you want to get into that yeah i had one one other thing i wanted to say i mean just kind of touching on um, the construction too Turn um, the building if, into a chimney. It's, it's That's what you want to do. Right? Yeah. Turn you the know, building into a chimney. If you got fire in the cock lock, <clears throat> wait for a line before you start pulling, pulling sand. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Wait for a line. Or, or wait for that second truck to kind of cut a hole before you start pulling sand. Right. It's going to it's gonna let all that, like, superheated gas, all that, whatever. I think they, kind of, I think like, they call that a flow path, Eric. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> No, no, <laughs> I learned it. but nonetheless, you know, if you if you kind of go in, you start pulling ceilings, all that, all that, whatever is gonna all that heat. push down on you. Yeah, man, yeah, absolutely. Push Same thing on. with um yeah. with knee walls, especially when you start getting into these two and a half, three and yeah. a half, that half story, man. You get those knee walls, and uh, mm-hmm. and you're you start pulling walls and stuff, and you don't have a line, and now you're now you're in it. You know what I mean? Um, one hundred percent, definitely, 100%. definitely a good point. Uh, all right, let me bring up this first scenario, oh, and then Lord, we'll just let you Lord. we'll let you run us through as the uh, first do truck here. Let's see. You guys, you guys are gonna love my illustrations. So let me know when it's up. And... It's up now. Oh Lord, it's oh, fire! Lord. Lord, it's a fire! And, and what's Lord, funny is. Lordy. I just I just made this, but Eric, you said you had an almost in this specific building, an almost identical fire. One one hundred percent, which is pretty funny. Um, when, when I- yeah, so so uh, talk us talk us through like as uh, number one, like what your size up would be on this, and then like if you were coming in first, do truck your considerations, what you're doing, where you're going, what you're thinking about. So let me just talk about the fire we had a little bit, right? So this is this is actually right next to 14s. Um, it's like we're actually almost – I won't say across the street, but it's like across the street. Like um, 
It's a 14. So we came in second do, right? So, and I was driving, coincidentally. And uh, so they went to the roof. But allegedly what ladder four and 14s, what, what they did is they went, they went through the back. And they try to make make the push in the back, okay. you know, through the back, try to get try to get to the front. And um, I guess conditions was just kind of deteriorating kind of fast. So what they ended up doing is I'm not a big transitional attack guy, but they kind of went, they kind of got back to, they went kind of retreated back to the back stairwell. Okay. And engine two kind of hit it from the front, and just enough to kind of just so four teams a lot of work can kind of make make that push and kind of start, um, you know. Um, putting the rest of the rest of the fire out and start start opening up, you know. Yep. So, um, that was that was it in a nutshell on, on the fire we had. But if it was me pulling up first, dude, from a a position standpoint, I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can get if I can position position our truck. If not on this Bravo side, on 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 this front Alpha Delta side right there. Okay. You know what I mean. Um, and then. I will probably kind of do the same thing. Probably see if I can make entry in the back. You know, I already because I already know where it is, right? So I'm gonna right. I'm gonna see if I can make entry in the back. You know what I mean? And see if I can like help four teams kind of put uh, get their line in place and kind of push the fire up. Right. You know, that's kind of what what I would do. You know. Gotcha. <clears throat> yeah. So so my idea with this is like I, I, we talk about a lot. Like the bread and butter up here is rear porches on like two and a half, three story mm-hmm. extending inside. Obviously, this is. A little this is a front porch but i was kind of trying to give that kind of similar similar vibe so you know you call this a i don't even know if you'd, you'd call this a two and a half story or a three story but um i will call it two and a half story. yeah because because yeah. the because the living space the answered well yeah because i was looking at that that very top peak there on the bravo side and i didn't know if that was another half a story or if that was just like a uh, dormer but um yeah it looked yeah. like a dormer to me yeah, so two and a half story. So the the top floor living space is built into what would gen- generally typically be the attic space, right? Um, mm-hmm. Starting on like second floor porch, uh, obviously like extended inside. You got fire in Alpha and Bravo side windows, and then I tried to put you know getting smoke out of the out of the vents in the uh, in the cockpit area and out of the top floor window. So obviously this fire is communicating upstairs. Um, mm-hmm. So your your tactic would be to pull up and then make entry into the back, do a search of the yeah. do a search of the fire floor and then the the floor above. Yeah, one hundred percent. Is can you like in your mind see the layout of this house? Like, do you know like generally what would be where in this? Like, my my guess is like that second floor that Alpha side is probably like a living room. Bedrooms are kind of in the back. Yeah. Kitchen's probably on like the Delta side or all the way back on the Charlie side. Is that the kind yeah. of situation you're thinking too? One one hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. One one. So in the stairwell, the stairwell I'm guessing to that second floor is going to take you right into the fire room, right? Yeah. If, if I had to guess, I'm assume the this the, if off the front, the one on the right is probably going to take me to the upper floors, and the one on the left right. is probably going to take me. All throughout that first floor. Like an L shape, you're going to go up up to a landing, take yeah. a left, and you're going to enter right into the living room, right? 100%. Yeah. But at least by kind of going through the back, I'm kind of entering that situation on the same level. Right. You feel me? As opposed to like trying to fight to, to like get on the same right. level. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, I got you. Yeah, that makes sense. If, like if, you said before, push the fire out. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Nice. All right. I'm going to... But mind you, if I do that, I got to communicate that because that's not, that's definitely an odd walk I can make, but it's just not really in our like policy. Right. So if I'm going to go, go in the back, I got to let incoming companies know, like, Hey, like uh, a lot three, we're going to make entry uh, through the back, right. you know? So, so now other companies can kind of fill in where, where they're needed. Right. You know? <clears throat> um, all right. I'm going to throw up one more here. Let's see. I thought you were saying you were going to throw up. I'm like, all right, well, thanks. Yeah, you, dis- <laughs> you disgust me. I'm out of here. I'm just gonna throw up right now. <laughs> um, so I just I just want to go ahead and give myself props for these uh, amazing graphics. Yeah, look at the velocity. Yeah, bro, of that, smoke. that thing is cooking, right? Look at the look at the that flow path on that smoke. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I am gonna throw up actually. <laughs> um, all right, so so this is this is obviously a very different building and a very different um fire scenario so if you were pulling up to this what would your what would your thinking be 
Um, I, I, either it's a basement fire or it's a fire on the first floor. That's what I'm thinking. So I'm a, I'm gonna try to make entry, you know, and, and and again, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to find the fire, trying to get as close as possible, and and then try to start searching back, you know. Um, another thing I, I want to do is like <clears throat> this is more second do stuff, but like one have companies try to check for extension on on the second, third, or fourth floor. Yeah. You know what I mean? If if I'm having smoke like that on one, I can only imagine what it's gonna be be on on two, three, and four. You know what I'm right. saying? So. Um, in this, in this building, I'm not real familiar with what this layout might be. This is a pretty long building. Is that center stairwell all the way up? Yeah. Okay. And, and what do you think this is like eight units or do you think it's more than that? I, I want to say maybe 16, I think, cause I think there's another set of, another set of units on the back as well. That, that's what I was wondering. Cause it's really long. It looks like, yeah. it looks like it, it's big enough to be, to be, yeah. um, eight units on each side. One, one front and one back on yeah. each floor. Yeah. I want to say like 16, <clears throat> I want to say like 16 units in there. And then obviously we know this is yeah. like a, a true brick building because of the, the lentils over the windows. Um, mm. you got that like overhang up top and then, um, we talk about fire communicating to like the top floors, right? So we talked a little yeah. bit about the pipe chases being, um, being like the big area of uh, communication, fire communication for uh, Is it smoke coming out of the Delta side right there. Yeah. All the way at the top. You like that? Oh, I, I just noticed that right now. Oh shit. Uh, I just noticed that. Yeah. Too. <laughs> oh, look, I can do this. This is, we're learning together. Well, then, 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 you know what, then, you know what? No, then is that fire pushing out? That's, now? A laundry, that's a laundry <laughs> exhaust. It was supposed to be. A, then you know what though? Too? <laughs> oh, I, I hit the wrong. Then you know what though too? And then you really got to get companies up on on was it one two on four? Right. Start pulling pulling the ceiling because now now you really got to check that cock off to see if it's running right. the cock lock. You so, know what I'm so my understanding of of <laughs> uh, of this like brick construction, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, is this these big gaps right here? This is ju- usually the pipe chases. Right. Yeah. When you get those big those big gaps between the windows over here, this is this sh- should generally be where you're getting waste pipes and stuff chasing up the walls, right? All right. For sure. This is this is bread and butter type three ordinary construction. Yeah, exactly. Like, we, we see this um, and then this is obviously a huge villain. So this is you know you're talking about uh, what time of day is this? You know, are there people coming out from inside? Um, it's obviously occupied, yeah. right? You got curtains in all the windows. Um, this must yeah. be winter time because I don't see any air conditioners unless that's common for you guys. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, um, no. But that's a good for like sure. if it's summertime, those ACs are are good indicators of where the living spaces are, right? So you can start focusing yes, for absolutely. people on that stuff. Um, if you're pulling your truck mm-hmm. up to this, what are you? What's your positioning like? Where are you throwing it? Yeah, I think this is a very straightforward position. I don't because this is on Belder Street, right? This is right behind the fires. Okay. So. There's no, there's no power lines, you know, like nothing like that. The only thing you may run into is cars or maybe a sewer grade or something. Right. But in terms of like getting a position, I, I think, I don't think you're going to really have a problem because like you can like have a not as aggressive of a position and you're still going to get a good spot on this, right. you know? And this is where um, you're going to send everybody but, up top. And what, what kind of cuts are you making? Say this thing is obviously you see smoke starting to come out here. Say this thing does get up and it's running mm-hmm. the cock loft. What's your what's your your tactic up there? So it depends where 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 in in the cock loft it is, right? So if if we start if you get companies up there on on three and we and they start opening up on that delta side, right? In here, <clears throat> right? That's the side, right? Yep. So and they start pulling, they see fire. That's where I'm gonna start making my hope my okay my my hope, right? So and I'm gonna make it as big if if if, if I'm under the impression if I'm already if I'm gonna go up there I'm gonna make it as big as as big as what I need to you know what I mean so eight by eight huge hole right huge hole you're trying to draw it all you know to that one spot instead of like instead of instead of moving horizontally through the building one one hundred percent and probably probably gonna need to make multiple holes right especially if. If if I make a hole and it's not there, now I have to start thinking. Okay, now where is it? Where is it right. going? Or is it coming to me? You know what I mean? Right. So, but I would, if I was a betting man, I would say maybe a little bit to the right of where you where you, you kind of put that red that red little 
doodle right there. That's where I would I would cut. Yeah, start to open up. Yeah, all right. Yeah, um, like huge eight by huge hole. Yeah, huge hole. Um, and I just wanted you to know, point out real quick. I was just kind of noticed back here. You talk about boarded up doors and stuff. This looks like an occupied building, but it looks like that that door is boarded up right there. So you know, just going back to that. I think I think that's a I think that's a vacant we have right right by the firehouse. Is it vacant? If I remember. Do you guys have yeah, obviously think- vacants are always quote vacant right do you guys have a policy for vacants or are you still you still making full entry i don't think we have a clear cut policy on vacants um i think for the most part we're still going to try and make entry man you know what yeah. i mean unless the pharmacist's office kind of sends something out and says yo exterior operations we're still going to at least try and make an initial move in because right. like I'm, I'm telling you right now like if if, if someone can sit outside a building and say no one's in there then they're full of shit like, like, you know That's what I mean? It. There's no way you can tell. Those are the arguments people always no. have. You know, like, um, was it Baltimore no you last year that, that lost yeah. lost those crews in a supposed vacant, but then, you know, they have mattresses mm-hmm. and, you know, there's people in there. and um, 100%. Yeah, you never know. You never know. You got people squatting everywhere, man. Like, so I'm not going to say we're going to go in there and hang out, but we're definitely going to go and do a quick search. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And then kind of, like, move accordingly from there. Nice, dude. You know? Um. Um, I, I want to talk, talk a little bit about the roof, yeah, right? Yeah. If you're gonna um, for flat roof, right? Tr- at least definitely try to have three people up there. You know what I'm saying? Um, one guy kind of just overseeing the whole thing, you know, and then like two guys making the cuts, right? If if you're if you're making these cuts, you're super task oriented, right? Like you know you're you're positioning your body the way you need to make make these cuts. Right. Right. So sometimes you may get jammed up just like, especially with, with your smoke, you may get jammed up on where your point of egress is, you know? Right. So just having one guy in the bucket being like, being like, Hey, Hey, you know, over here, or maybe not on the bucket, but on the roof, but they never just, just don't have them move. Right. You know what I mean? You, um, They're just watching your back. Like, hey, I'm pointing. Your yeah, exactly. The point of egress is here. I'm watching these guys work, you know? Right. Now, if things get a little smoky, Hey guys, this, this is a way out. Right. right here. You know, you know what I mean? So that's just something to just to like especially think about, you know? Yeah, dude, that makes and, makes a hundred percent sense. You know, so <clears throat> but uh flat roofs are definitely like more labor labor intensive. Yeah. Well right? and then and, there's um, a bunch of like you know, like a peaked roof you're you're probably dealing with I mean you could be dealing with several layers, but you're dealing with like decking and shingles, flat roof, you're dealing with rubble rubber and sometimes gravel and all kinds of different shit up there. And, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, man. So, uh, that, that's all I, that's all I had in like the, uh, the outline, you know, kind of like to, to follow. Um, is there anything else you wanted to talk about or point out, um, whether about Hartford or about, uh, truck company operations or anything? I mean, I mean, that's really it, man. Just like I said, man, I think, I think the big thing, um, when it comes to search, man, like I said, is just pay attention to what other people yeah. are doing. And, and pay attention to like how what they're doing affects you. Absolutely, you know, particularly companies that are, that are not operating with with a line. Yep. You know, focused, you know, focused if, aggression. If, you know, focused aggression, yeah, dude. Exactly. I, lo- I love that. Exactly. I love that. That's great. That's what, that's my big thing. I've been telling I've been telling you guys, man. Just like pay attention to what people yeah. are doing because whatever they're doing is going to affect you in some way. Man. Yeah, you absolutely, know? man. Yeah, that's good advice. That's good advice across the board, my man. Yep. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. Johnny sure. Barry, you guys got anything else? No, one thing that we talked about before, man, I kind of wanted to, you know, obviously, you know, having six years on the job, you, you sound like uh, you have a, a real good amount of experience. And I think what you said before about you have a lot of time acting out of grade. Is that right? Right. Yeah. I so. Do. Well, it's one of those things, right? When when all of a sudden you start becoming responsibility, you start becoming responsible for people. Um, it kind of changes yeah. the way that you think, and it allows you, I think, a little bit of a little bit. Um, it allows you to grow in a sense, right? Because you're taking on more responsibility. So I don't know. Yeah, for sure. yeah. I don't Absolutely. Know if you just like, so how much time? How much time are you getting out of grade? So I have a captain on my yeah. group, right? So. Um, so a lot of times, and we have opening deputy chief positions, so uh, or district chief mm-hmm. positions. So a lot of times, um, the, all the captains kind of take turns, like like being in the yeah, car, right? So 
for me and all the guys in the back, we kind of take turns being being in charge, okay. right? So we, we we refer to it as being in charge or acting out of kind of great. Um, so I would say more often than most, right? But not still not all right. the time. Cool, you know what man. I'm saying? So um, there was a time when like you know our boss was out for a long time because he had um, some surgery going on, and then so we were acting acting like that now. Um, with him being in the car a lot, you know, acting out of grade for yeah. that, you know, um, we didn't, we didn't have a driver for a long time. So we were taking turns driving for, you know, so it was a lot of, it was acting out of grade. And at the time I hated it. I hated yeah. it. Hated yeah, I it. Bet. <laughs> looking, looking back on it, you know, it was a kind of a blessing in disguise, man, because yeah. it really just forces you to kind of know your area, be comfortable right. with the truck, you know, um, and just, just kind of like, and just being prepared, you know what yeah. I mean. I think I think that's the big yeah. thing. That's the big thing. So, um, no, it sucked. Forces you yeah, exactly. to step up. No, for sure. Yeah, I, I wish I could tell you, man. It sucks yeah. so bad. I'll yeah. complain about every trick. But <laughs> looking back on it, I, I, you know, like it was definitely a blessing yeah. in disguise. You know what I mean? Because like, now my confidence when it comes to driving or being charged is probably a little bit more than in the average yeah, yeah. private. Yeah. That's know? awesome, man. Cool, so, man. That's awesome for sure. Love uh, that, Barry. You got anything else, man? No, nah, I, I, I just thought it was cool to highlight. I mean, we, we appreciate you immensely, Eric. I, I thought it was cool to like to dive into the tactics, but also dive into the culture because it's yeah, like, yeah, you, like you said, it's that it's that middle ground, and it, it's cool to see like how you guys have created your own identity, your own culture in Hartford. Um, it's just it's really cool to see. We really appreciate yeah. your time, man. No, absolutely, man. I, I say all the time, like. Our fireman, man, we can we can be in a room with like a Boston fireman and a New York fireman, and we won't feel intimidated because we're super comfortable in Love our own it. skin, you know, yeah. and, and we're confident in our own yeah. ability. And, you know and, and so, um, yeah, never absolutely. never should anyway. Like, you know what I mean? Like every everywhere's got their own yeah. little culture, and like you know, big thing for us is like you yeah. know, not every job's Chicago or Detroit or New York City, exactly. or you know what I mean. Exactly. So like highlighting exactly. obviously you're in a pretty good size city um highlighting that highlighting the smaller departments and you know there's a there's a lot of knowledge and a lot of good people out there if more people would just give a shit on our instagram page then we could get them on this show <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. fair enough man fair enough fair enough like like i said man, i'm super tapped in with like all the social media yeah. stuff you know always yeah. always trying to like learn something man like you know, you know what i mean best, dude. absolutely knowledge yep. out there for like, how do you, how do you not try right. to tap into it? You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, like there's so many people yeah, who have a little for, like, you why can, not? You try can to show up, out, you can you know? show up and like be there and like collect your paycheck and get through your career. Or you can like show up and give a shit. You know what I mean? And uh, no, we're, all, we're, we're all here because we, uh, we're the latter. I hope yeah. at least I try to be. No, you know? Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And that's, that's the whole premise of the show is to like, just get like-minded people together, talk about the job, talk about tactics and like encouraging those conversations where we all can continue to learn. I always like, I, recently I've been saying like the most dangerous place in the fire service is yeah. the couch. Big time. That's, that's a fact. Well, and, it's, and it's easy. It's easy to find yourself there. Yeah, if you absolutely. allow yourself to. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. Um, 100%. So I think, no, thank you for having Dude, me. No, on, thank man. thank you. Like yeah. seriously, like obviously, uh, joke. All jokes aside, uh, I'm I'm glad you you sent us that message and said something because that's what we want, man. We're we're trying to encourage, like Barry said, we're trying to encourage getting points of view from everywhere. You know what I mean? All these different people, whether you're five years on or you're 25 years on, everybody's got something to say if you care about this job. So, um, definitely, 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 thank you for uh, for coming on and and giving us your time and. Uh, yeah, man. Hopefully, we'll we'll see. We'll catch you at like a conference, or we'll make our way down to Hartford or something at some some point. Hopefully, man. If you, if you find yourself up know, in Boston, man. you let us know, man. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. We'll let you guys know. Right. Absolutely. There is a conference on April fifteenth. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I did see that. Yeah. I did see that. Yeah. I did see we, that. Oh, actually, uh, actually, we can <laughs> drop names because by the time this this airs, uh, people will know. Um, but we have some pretty pretty good guests coming, so we have. Uh, uh, Chief Eichels works with us. Uh, Brian Nardelli, who we've had on before, Johnny knows really well, is Brockton. Um, but we got, <clears throat> we also have um, Captain Desrusso from Manchester Fire. So I don't know if you know his story. Um, he got caught in a flashover 
went to bail out of a ladder, got hung up on the ladder. His crew actually kicked the ladder over and saved him. Um, still got burned yeah. up pretty bad, but he's coming. And then we actually have uh, Ray McCormick is coming to be our keynote. Ooh, <laughs> there we go. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so it's going to be, it's going to be a good show. Uh, obviously that's a hell of a drive, but uh, tell your friends. Yeah. <laughs> no, I will. I will. I will. Um, yeah, man. Um, uh, nothing I just want to say, man, when, when I said the whole full path thing, I'm obviously oh, joking. Oh, dude, dude. Right? Even if you're not you like, know, whatever, you know, yeah. I just got to say that <laughs> my department is super old school, man. I love super it. old school. Like, yeah. I mean, you even met your full path, dudes. Are like, yeah. What are you talking about? No, I love, I love it, dude. Like, uh, yeah. So is that is that someone's hairline? <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> yeah, yeah. John, it's, it's Johnny's exactly. mustache. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't have that much flow. For sure. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Love it. I don't know. I don't know. It's looking pretty. You got to put a little wax in it, Johnny. But it's looking pretty, pretty fantastic. I just blow, I just blow dry it nowadays. At least, uh, at least you have a mustache, <laughs> unlike sure. one of us. Uh, no. How do I? There he is. Yeah. It'll be back. There he It'll is. be back. It'll be back. <laughs> uh, all right, fellas. Well, uh, we'll wrap it up with that. Again, man, thank you so much for coming on. Um, we really appreciate it. Thanks, and, man. dude, if, you, if there are any other guys in your department or, you know, even like the the volunteer stuff you did before, or you, you know anybody that's interested in coming on and talking about something they're passionate about, we, we want to have them all. So point, point them our direction or point for us sure. their direction, whatever. Um, yeah, so – uh, thanks everybody for tuning in. We will uh, we'll catch you in the next episode. And uh, again, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and uh, give us a follow on our social medias. And if you're in the Metro Boston area, April fifteenth, check out the New England Firefighting Lecture Series, the Spring Thaw. It's going to be a good time. All right, later. Job talks out. There we go, Johnny. We forgot it. Job <laughs> no, talks out. I didn't out. forget it. I didn't forget <laughs> it. It was just hard to time it online.